Gracie Alley is the production designer on the Hulu comedy series Pen15, starring Maya Erskine and Anna Conkle. I'm Denton Davidson for Gold Derby. Gracie, what was that one item you just had to have on the set of Pen15 in order for you to sit back and feel satisfied with your work? Uh, I would have to say Anna's clear phone was up there just because I wanted one as a kid so bad and never got one. Um, but there was like a lot of there was like a lot of like nostalgic uh, old things that I pulled from my childhood, like the very first Max with like the colored tubes and um, what else? There's like a beaded dolphin lamp in Meyer's room that was my sister's growing up that I loved. Um, the actual just, lamp? No, I found it on eBay, oh. but <laughs> but I. Could could be I don't know, <laughs> um, but yeah everything everything was like so nostalgic and fun and uh, just like really it was really fun like collaborating with my art department and like pulling out like everyone's memories and finding those items to like really bring the era alive. And we see posters of like Eminem and Nelly on the boys' rooms and In Sync, Spice Girls, Backstreet Boys, and the girls. I remember all those magazines that we would pull pull those from. Was that something you did have on top of mind or how did you decide to decorate the bedrooms of these young teenagers? I did like, uh, well, I feel like kids, at least like growing up, um, cause I'm roughly the same age as Maya and Anna. So I, I went through seventh grade, seventh grade at the same time they did. And I feel like kids were so good at like decorating in a thrifty way and like kind of tearing apart magazines and, you know, putting pictures up of their friends on their walls and just creating these like uh, kind of shrines and um, I don't, like just, just like making it their own with it out, without it being permanent, you know? like stuff you can like take down. Um, but my I my wall was definitely full of Leonardo DiCaprio. I loved <laughs> Titanic and that was my first crush and I had pictures of him all over my wall. That's hilarious. Um, we did all have those pictures on the wall. I Mine was very embarrassing. I remember I had like so many pictures of almost everyone from Beverly Hills 90210 on it that it was like almost like wallpaper. It was like, yeah. it's kind of humiliating for me to admit. Um, and I think it's interesting to point out that they're sort of between these two ages of childhood and adults. So we do see these crushes on the wall, um, mm -hmm. but they're also getting computers. Um, but, and we also see toys like the troll mm -hmm. dolls the, the ponies everywhere. Um, is that a way of sort of putting in perspective of being kind of between ages at that time mm -hmm. in their life? Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, it takes a while to get like a mature bedroom if you ever do have one before you move on to college. A lot of times it's like relics of your past and stuff that you're a little too old for. And probably like stuff that your like mom picked out, you know? So it was definitely, we definitely wanted to like create layers of, of their like childhood. And then like, kind of like the top layer of like what they think is cool now, what they're into, like, you know, pictures of like Devin Swa and like different heart throbs. And how, much research do you have to do to make sure it's accurate in terms of technology? Because we were kind of on the cusp of major changes right then and there, like right on the edge of what TVs looked like, what the phones looked like. Um, is that things you had to keep looking up to remind yourself like, okay, we can have this TV in Mora's basement? Yeah, def definitely. It was like really important to us to make sure that we put in the right electronics of the, the um, year. So it was definitely a challenge trying to find period accurate electronics that don't look too beat up, especially like since that technology was newer with the computers and some of like the TVs that we had, um, it was like important to like find, find the right ones and especially like for 
everyone's like social economic like bracket too. And were you in middle school or high school drama club at all? Like in terms of building sets? No, but I, I should have been a techie. I really related to that episode. I was I wondering about, <laughs> about that episode and and where you would have where you would have fit in. Um, I definitely yeah related to Anna a lot in that one. So how did you get on this career path? Um, well, I mm. I grew up loving movies like a lot of people do, but I always paid attention to the background and kind of the mood and emotions that sets could give you. And um, my mom was a flight attendant and she flew a lot from uh, Chicago to LA and from Chicago. And she had some like industry people on her flight and she was always trying to like hustle and like, be like, do you need a free intern? Like, you know, are you looking for any like PAs? And she got me a internship over a summer working on a movie in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I just totally fell in love and knew I wanted to do that. Um, and didn't quite know, like the closest that I could get to it was going to school for interior design because there wasn't a whole lot of production designer programs. So I got my bachelor degree in interior design. And once I finished, I moved to LA and just started working, working on anything like, uh, you know, music videos and low budget, like feature films, just trying to get as many connections as possible. And then eventually it started to snowball. Wow. Um, <clears throat> and how did progressing into season two change from season one. Now that you're an established show, what changes about that? Season one was super challenging because of budget. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of money, so we got very creative and, um, you know, thrifting for things and making deals at prop houses. Warner Brothers, like, gave us a flat that was very generous to us and um, finding the right locations. So we didn't have to do a ton of like construction work. And then season two, we got more money and we were able to build a lot of sets, which was super exciting for me. So we built my and Anna's room and we built the classroom and then we built some like other fun sets like the like Gabe's room. We also built Sam's room. We built Mars basement. But it was it was really fun and challenging to do all of those builds on a stage. And then kind of the puzzle piece of like what's worth building for not only like shooting purposes, like the flexibility of like the schedule, but also you know, like what has like the most scenes in it. And um, we got to build like a lot of my like favorite hero sets. And where did that creepy mask in Mora's bathroom come from? That was actually one of our writers, Josh, uh, <laughs> had that, that was from his own uh, junior high experience. Like he had a close friend who, um, who had a mask like that hanging in his basement and it always creeped him out. So we created our own and like put it in there. And it's, <laughs> I feel like we all have like some kind of like burnt image from like our childhoods of something that like creeped us out. We don't really understand it, you know, but it, it's forever like seared in your memory. That's hilarious. Um, and what was it like then building a set for the play to be in the TV show. Like it's like a set within a set. Yeah. So it was it was really fun collaborating with Anna and Maya on that one because they did do a lot of theater in school. So they had like specific ideas on how shitty it should be, you know, like <laughs> how how um like we tried to make like the scenic work of like the fake wood and like books look very like hand painted and, and kind of rudimentary, um, but we still needed to elevate it probably more than what like a junior high play would have because there were some, we had to like hide 
and a scaffolding behind it. So we built it taller than it probably would have been. And, um, and just like kind of the, the space that we needed to take up for like to hide all the equipment and stuff. Um, but that was, that was super fun collaborating with them on it. You know, when I watch things and I think of production design, all I always think of is like, there's so much stuff, like there's just stuff everywhere. What for you is the most challenging part of set design? That's a good question. Um, I think like the most challenging and honestly, one of my favorite parts is collaborating with the creators and the director and the cinematographer because everyone comes in with their own specific kind of vision even if they don't know exactly what it is and it's my job to like bring my vision to it and still incorporate and um collaborate with with a bunch of other people so i i think like i think it's really amazing to like go through that process because you usually have your design and what you have in your mind and then other people's inputs and like ideas just add and strengthen like your original design yeah i mean i just see like mora's basement when the, during the sleepover episode and you've got extra blankets thrown around and then there's cheese puffs in the background and it's like you have to sort of constantly think Oh, let, like, let's put one more thing and a snack over here. Um, that's mind boggling to me. And I love that, that we had like a little like Reagan shrine that her like Maura's dad had in the basement. And I love doing that set because we got to build it because there's no basements in LA, hardly any. And we shot Maura's house on location. So like the kitchen area was was a location but then we tied in like that built-in bar with the like, cabinetry of the kitchen and then like that like super early aughts um carpet pattern and like the greens and the reds like that whole color palette felt very familiar to me and i i just had so much fun building it and what would you say was the most challenging thing you had to do for for this season um, we were faced with a lot of challenges that were beyond our anyone's control. Um, the when we first started, when our first day shooting, we got shut down because of the fires, because of wildfires, and we couldn't shoot at that location. So we started shooting at the stages, and that was, I believe, like two months premature. But luckily, we were ahead of our building schedule. Um, and we were able to like accommodate that. And then we, um, I don't, I don't know if Anna told you, but her dad ended up passing away halfway through shooting. So that was really awful for her to like have to experience and, and kind of like, uh, sadly, like just like having to like rearrange our schedule and stuff. And I don't know, but she, she was such a, she was such a trooper and like really um, was really strong through all of it and uh, just like a great showrunner and leader through all of it too. She definitely had like a lot on her plate. Well, Gracie, I wanna congratulate you on all the work that you've done this season. We wish you and the entire cast uh, and crew of Pen15 the best of luck this upcoming Emmy season. I want to encourage our viewers here to head over to goldderby.com, make your awards predictions uh, for this upcoming season, and watch more interviews with top contenders. Uh, Gracie, thank you again so much for talking with me about Pen15 today. Thank you. It was really fun.